Good afternoon, everybody. Where's the camera? I'm looking at the wrong side of the phone today. Gosh, I've just... Um, Tess Crawley, sorry. I've, I've caught myself on the hop, as you can probably tell. Tess Crawley here, Director of Dr. Tess Crawley and Associates Clinical Psychology and Forensic Psychology is my area of practice. Um, and our practice overall works with um, a range of clients, including perinatal and infant mental health clients, um, and rural mental health clients, children and adolescents, older adults, you name it. We've probably got somebody who'd be really experienced in the area that you might need some assistance in. Now yesterday I um, posted a video where I was talking about goal setting and I was talking about um, how to keep yourself motivated to actually achieve your goals by making sure your goals are realistic achievable, measurable, um, so that you can actually set up a plan to be able to implement um, the things that you need to do to be able to achieve your goals. Now in that video I talked about measuring outcomes and I was a bit vague. I said, you know, there will be things that I will measure. Um, because of course I signed up for the gym yesterday trying to get myself a little bit healthier and I came away from that video not quite happy with how vague I had been about what it was I was going to measure um, but I can tell you I've just come straight from the gym where I've had my um, in, I don't know what they call it I guess an intake assessment or whatever they call it um, where they did lots of things and I haven't been to the gym in over 10 years and I can tell you it was a, an incredibly interesting experience for me as a psychologist um, to see them using an iPad um, and videoing me doing certain things and um, special scales that measured all sorts of different aspects to my physical makeup and putting all that information into their iPad and then coming out with a range of really clearly measurable um, uh, outcomes that I can track over time. So so on the back of the video I did yesterday where I wasn't happy with the vagueness of my what I will measure statements, um, I can tell you now that I have a measurable um, risk of injury profile so that I can, for example, um, uh, measure over time whether or not my risk for injury reduces because of my increased fitness, uh, whether my... Um, Oh, what were some of the other measurables? There were a range of them, um, stability and um, coordination and things like that, that you can actually measure. They can give you a numerical um, measure of what that currently is and then you get reassessed over successive periods of time so that you can track how you're going on those measurable elements of fitness. And that, to me, was just so exciting. I thought, that's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Because I think you're probably aware that I deliberately did not use the words weight or kilograms or anything like that. Because I am very focused on um, what fitness and health means rather than what it looks like or what it measures on a set of scales. And I think that's a really important point to make, not just for what I'm doing with my own health, but that as um, a society, I think it's really important that we move away from those kinds of measurables and actually talk more and more about things like stability and strength and stamina and um, coordination and flexibility. Things that actually have a meaning and can give us something that we can measure that is, is more accurately reflective of our body shape and size and what its potential is and how we are meeting its potential. So for me, I guess that's a little bit of a soapbox that I'm jumping on that um, there's too much pressure in our media on uh, women and men to achieve certain ideals in terms of body shape. Um, but that's a topic for another day. So today I was just jumping in to let you know, obviously today's day 11 of my 90 day vlog challenge. So to let you know that I had actually come up with some measurables that I can use now to keep me motivated. So why, why does having something that's measurable have an impact on motivation? Um, think about maybe something a little bit simpler that you could use. For example, you've decided you're going to go for a walk three times a week. Okay. 
Uh, and that's your ideal goal. You'd really like to be going for a walk for an hour, three times a week. Now you might say that's your ultimate goal of what you'd like to achieve, but what if you had a starting point? So say if you have um, uh, not very good fitness or you've only just had a baby and you're still in recovery mode, and a starting point might be saying, I'm gonna go for a walk five minutes down the road. And if I can do that every day, great. If I can do it twice a week, fantastic. And you might measure how many times a week you go and you might measure how long you go for. And they're two really simple measures of how your fitness is in increasing over time. The simplest one is how, you know, how long you're going for. Before you know it, you're seeing that you're going for five minutes and then you're going for 10 minutes and then you're going for a 15 minute walk. And as your, as your capacity, your, your strength and your, your stamina is improving over time, you're finding you're going for a 45 minute walk. And then you're finding that you're adding some running intervals in there and so on and so on. So you're actually um, seeing that there is um, progress being made because you're measuring it. Even if you just write down on your calendar, um, W5, and that might be mean you went for a walk for five minutes. And then the next time you go for a walk, you've written down W5. And then the next time you've gone for a walk, you've written down W10. And you can see over time that it's increasing. And that inspires you and motivates you to say, I can do this and I am getting better at this. And this is awesome. So whatever your goals are, make sure that you've got something, some element of it that you can measure so that you can compare your progress over time. So your starting point, your, your starting point, it's really important not to be judgmental about, about where you're at right now for your starting point. Don't be critical of what your baseline is. So your baseline is the starting point and that's all it is. We will say it's neither good nor bad, it's just your starting point. Um, I made a joke with a friend today um, saying that I'm going off for my um, assessment at the gym and I said it's probably going to be the first thing I've failed in the past decade. And she said to me, uh, and I held on to this today, she said, um, the only way you'll fail is if you don't turn up. And so I want you to sort of take that little message away with you today too. If you're working on something, whatever that something might be and you're striving to improve it it might be completing your your studies or it might be um, uh, learning to ride a horse or it might be um, any number of things it might be learning a, um, a new skill in your profession whatever it is if you can measure your progress over time so that you can track how you're going when you have lapses or little steps backward in your progress don't use that as an excuse to jump out of the program altogether look at that as a learning opportunity and say okay what's changed this week that I'm not doing as well as I was last week is there something else going on that I can tweak to get that motivation or to get that progress heading in the right direction again and before you know it you'll be looking back at a significant um, quantity of data to show you just how far you've come and then that you know that deserves a little bit of a pat on the back when you've achieved something awesome like that so that's probably enough for me today. Um, like I say, technology, I'm a bit of a nerd sometimes. So, you know, seeing the technology in use at the gym really did get me uh, a bit excited to see what, what it's possible for them to measure. So if you're, if you're looking at improving your own fitness and you're a bit scared to go to the gym, go check it out. <laughs> They're pretty awesome. Um, I will talk to you again tomorrow for day 12. In the meantime, if you're enjoying these videos, please let me know that you're enjoying them by giving me a like or a love or a comment or a question. Um, and if you wanna share these with friends or family, please do. If you've got a question and you're feeling a little bit shy to ask me in a public forum, such as on a comment, then do feel free to send me through a private message. Um, but I will encourage you, um, to keep in mind and another friend of mine who's a psychologist um, was posting today about children um, and she's actually encouraged her community to hey Frank thanks for joining uh, she's encouraged her community um, to consider the questions that they want to ask privately and just ask themselves the question is there anyone else out there that might actually benefit from the answer so feel free to ask me questions privately um, in which case I will ask you, do you mind if I just generalise the answer for public um, uh, benefit if I think it's something that other people will benefit from. Otherwise, comment away, let me know your thoughts, let me know your questions. Um, subscribe to the channel on YouTube if you'd like to be no um, notified when there are new videos. 
Um, otherwise, you know, let your um, click the switch on your notifications for this um, post so that you get notified in future when I'm live to Facebook and you can chat, join in and chat. Hi, Frank, saying hello. Um, Frank, you're um, really skilled at coming in just at the end, but I'm pleased to have you here with me today. Um, so everybody take care. Have a great Tuesday afternoon. I'm about to head off now and collect my monkeys and take them off to their next little activity after school today. Um, I will talk to you tomorrow and we'll be in the middle of the week tomorrow. So I'll talk to you all then. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.